Howdy! In this video, we're going to go ahead and introduce angular kinematics, as well as do an example. So, before we begin, I'd like y'all to pause the video real quick, jot all this down, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, the first thing that I want you to recall is the formulas for angular kinematic or rotate or linear kinematics, right? Way back from chapters two and three. And the equations for kinematics in a straight line are the exact same um, equations as kinematics in a circle. And in fact, I love angular kinematics a lot more than linear because you can only go in one direction, and that's in a circle. Back with linear kinematics, we're going up, down, left, and right. And if you dealt with 3D, and then in the 3D direction as well. In this case, you can only go in a circle. Now, theta is the angle that you've traveled along that circle. Omega, that is going to be your angular velocity, and alpha will be your angular acceleration. Now, it's really important that we understand the difference between the angular and the linear. So I kind of want to do kind of an example real quick before uh, we go through with this. So what I want you to focus on right now is I want you to focus on the tip of the pen, and I want you to focus at the bottom of the black part of the pen right here. And as I rotate this around in a circle, notice how both the tip and the bottom of the black part um, completed one full revolution, one full circle, two pi radians in the exact same amount of time. And what that tells me is that the angular velocity of the tip and the angular velocity of the bottom part of this black part are exactly the same because it traveled the same angular distance in the same amount of time. However, let's think about this. Let's talk about linear velocity, right? If you notice, the tip has to travel a farther linear distance than does this black part. And so what that tells me is even though they have the same angular velocity, the linear velocity, the tip, is moving faster because it has to travel a farther um, linear distance than the bottom part of that black part. And that's where this comes into play. If ever you need to convert from angular to linear, or vice versa, linear to angular, you're going to be utilizing these, this, uh, I guess, relationship. What you're going to do is your tangential, or your linear distance, is going to be r times omega. Your tangential, or linear velocity, is going to be r times omega, where r is the distance from the axis of rotation. So because it rotated about here, the linear distance r for the tip is going to be greater than the r for the bottom part of the black part, which is why the linear velocity is going to be faster. And same with tangential acceleration. Now, in order to convert, these cannot be in revolutions. These cannot be in degrees. They have to be in radians. And so, you need to be able to convert between revolutions, radians, and degrees. And there's six different equations, and I don't have any single one of them memorized. Instead, what I do is I look at the relationship between revolution, radians, and degrees. I know one revolution is 2 pi radians, which is 360 degrees. So, for example, I want to convert 7 pi over 6 radians both into revolutions and degrees. I'm just going to do a little dimensional analysis. If you have 7 pi over 6 radians, and I want to convert that into revolutions, then I put revolutions on top, and I know one revolution is 2 pi radians. You then do 7 pi over 6 divided by 2 pi, and that's how you convert into revolutions. Likewise, if I want to put that in degrees, I start with the 7 pi over 6 radians, and I know if I want degrees, I put degrees on top. And so there's 360 degrees for every 2 pi radians. So I take the 7 pi over 6, multiply by 360, divide by 2 pi. And this works no matter where you start and where you're going. Just utilize this dimensional analysis. Now with all of that being said, let's go ahead and actually take a look at an example. Okay, let's take a look at an example in which we're going to utilize this. I think it'd probably be easier to go here and here. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. And number one, it says a turntable, 0.75 meters in diameter, is rotating about a fixed axle with an initial angular velocity of 0.25 revolutions per second and a constant angular acceleration of 0.9 revolutions per second squared. 
before I begin to start this problem, let's write down everything given. Notice I really don't care about the diameter. I care about the radius. The radius of this, that divided by 2, is going to be point, um, 0.375 meters. Let's see, I've got an initial angular velocity, my omega naught is 0 0.25 revolutions per second, and an angular acceleration of 0 0.9 revolutions per second squared. And in part A, what I want to do is I want to compute omega after 0.2 seconds. So I went in omega f, I'm given omega naught, alpha, and t. I know that t is 0 0.2 seconds, and so I can easily say that omega f is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. So that'll be my 0.25 revolutions per second plus 0 0.9 revolutions per second squared times my time of 0 0.2 seconds and I threw all this into a calculator earlier and ended up getting 0 0.43 0 0.43 revolutions per second let's take a look at part B for part B how many revolutions has the turntable spun so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a change in theta I've got my final velocity, my initial velocity, and my acceleration, and so I can utilize this equation in order to find my change in theta. My change in theta, if we did a little bit of algebra, is going to be this omega f squared minus omega naught squared over 2 alpha, which we have all of those values. My omega f is 0.43 revolutions per second. My omega naught is 0.25 revolutions per second. And my alpha was 0 0.9 revolutions per second squared. Once again, I threw this into a calculator earlier and got 0 0.068 revolutions. Let's take a look at part C. For part C, what's the tangential speed of the point on the rim of the turntable at 0.2 seconds. And so in essence, I want my VF, and what this is going to be, this will be R times omega F. But you better not multiply the radius by 0.43, because 0.43 is in revolutions per second. I need to convert this into radians per second first. So, omega F, we know, is 0 0.43 revolutions per second, and what I need to do is convert revolutions into radians. Well, I know that one revolution is 2 pi radians. So I know I want radians, so for every 2 pi radians, that is one revolution. I threw that into a calculator earlier and ended up getting 2.7. Yeah, 2.7 radians per second. And so now that I have that, I can find my final velocity. Your final velocity is your radius of 0.375 meters divided by the 2.7 radians per second. And whenever I threw that into the calculator, I ended up getting 1.01 .01 meters per second. Finally, let's take a look at D. In part D, what's the magnitude of the resultant acceleration of a point on the rim after 0.2 seconds, okay? Well, in this situation, what we need to do is understand that acceleration is a vector. Now, let's take a trip back to that first or second exam when we introduced uniform circular motion. We we're going around in a circle, and we had a constant speed. If we had a constant speed, we still had an acceleration when I moved into a circle, but acceleration is a change in velocity over a change in time. So if I, have a if I have a constant speed, why the heck did I have an acceleration? Because velocity is a change in, it gives you both, mag is a vector, so it gives me magnitude and direction. As I was going around, my direction was changing. Since I had a change in direction, my velocity changed. And so the point that I want to make with this is your radial acceleration simply dealt 
with your change in direction, and it always pointed towards the center. Okay, your radial acceleration dealt with your change in direction, and if you remember, it was always pointed towards the center. But now if you look at this problem, not only is the direction changing, speed is changing as well. And that tangential acceleration deals with your change in speed. Okay, that tangential acceleration deals with your change in speed. And so if you want your resultant acceleration, notice how these are always perpendicular. Um, you can think of these as x and y components, and so it would form a vector. So what I'm going to say is that a total is a vector. It's a vector that has a radial acceleration component and a tangential acceleration component. So if I want to find the magnitude of the resultant acceleration, magnitude of the total acceleration, this is going to be the square root of your radial acceleration squared plus my tangential acceleration squared. So let's go ahead and find each. First off, radial acceleration. Radial acceleration, we already know, is v squared over r. And in part c, we found that linear velocity. And so it's going to be 1.01 .01 meters per second squared divided by r, which is 0.375 meters. I threw this into the calculator earlier and ended up getting 2.73. 2.73 meters per second squared was your radial. As for my tangential, as we know, tangential acceleration, that's going to be r times alpha. But you better not multiply your radius by 0.9, because that's 0.9 revolutions per second squared. i got to put that in radians per second squared. And so, my alpha, which is 0 0.9 revolutions per second squared, we know that one revolution is 2 pi radians. And so, uh, whenever I threw that into the calculator, I got 2.12 uh, radians. Oops. Oh, whoops, nope, just kidding. I ended up getting 5.65. This was 5.65 radians per second squared. And now that I have that, now I can go ahead and find my tangential acceleration. And so your tangential acceleration, my r, is 0.375 meters. We multiply this by 5.65 radians per second squared, and that is your 2.12 meters per second squared. That would be your tangential acceleration. And now that I have my radial, now that I have my tangential, you plug it into your total, and so taking these two numbers, plugging it into there, I ended up getting 3.46. 3.46 meters per second squared. So this problem, in essence, encompassed all of angular kinematics, okay, especially when dealing with the stuff algebraically. In the next video, we're going to use calculus, um, but the calculus involved there is really the same as the linear. So just remember that all I care about is the radius. Your omegas and your alphas can be in revolutions or radians. And so as long as you keep your units consistent, then it really doesn't matter when dealing with your basic kinematic equations. However, if you ever want to convert into linear velocity, linear acceleration, linear distance, um, your angular stuff needs to be in radians. And so make sure you convert that into radians before you convert into linear. And finally, if you have something that's moving in a circle that is also increasing in speed, your acceleration has two components. It has a radial acceleration, which deals with a change in direction, and a tangential acceleration that deals with a change in speed. And so your total acceleration is going to, in essence, be a vector with those two components as, well, its components. And so if you ever need to find the magnitude, just do the magnitude as you would for any vector, but find your radial and tangential independently.